Americans are asking, why do they hate us? They hate what they see right here in this chamber, a democratically elected government. Their leaders are self-appointed. They hate our freedoms, our freedom of religion, our freedom of speech, our freedom to vote and assemble and disagree with each other. Canadians are targeted by these terrorists for no other reason than that we are Canadians. They want to harm us because they hate our society and the values it represents. Because they hate pluralism, they hate tolerance, and they hate the freedom of others, the freedom we enjoy. The safety of our special forces in the region is suddenly in question after a frank admission from the military. It revealed yesterday some of our soldiers have engaged in ground battles with Islamic State fighters. The Harper government has always said this is a non-combat mission. The opposition believes the Canadian public has been misled. Canadian special forces have come under fire again in Iraq, not once but twice in the past week alone. Direct firefights with ISIS militants, once more battling at the front lines. And tonight, CBC News has learned that Canadian soldiers have been in deadly ground combat with ISIS while no other coalition members have. The question is, why only Canada? Palestinians didn't put out the welcome map for Canada's foreign affairs minister. Instead, they pelted his convoy with eggs and shoes, a sign they're angry with Canada's stance in the Middle East. John Baer didn't back down, though, and reiterated the Harper government's support for Israel. He's having meetings with both sides and demanding that Palestinian leaders stop their bid to pursue charges of war crimes against Israel. The smooth transition in Saudi Arabia shows there is little will for dramatic change in the country. Many complain the regime is oppressive and consistently violates its citizens' human rights. The Canadian government sells the Saudis billions of dollars worth of military equipment. Critics are asking whether it's a relationship we should continue. Hi there, I'm Darren Howard. And I'm Robert Nisbet. You're tuned into Video Radio, independent media. For an intelligent world. And I have no egg on my face. Do you see that? Yeah, no, well, not at all. At least the Palestinians aren't serving us breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it turns out that Palestine and the entire world has social media. And they're watching the one party that's an embarrassment to each and every Canadian screw up game speed and not reverse their course. It's kind of sad that that was John Baird's last official mission. Yeah, I know. What a way. What a note. We saw social media light up and say this guy was really terrible for the country, made us all look bad, but that's why we're making Canada look good. We're independent media and we're here to make sure we tell the whole story. And of course, one of the main parts of the story is our mission in Iraq that of course the government refuses to divulge the costs on. We I, wait a second. Did you say refuses to divulge the cost? The most, you know, transparent and accountable government in Canada. Can you say F-35? Uh, not getting the right story is exactly what they're about. And apparently we weren't going to go and hit the ground. Apparently we weren't going to be in a combat mission. But however, CBC, I guess they got a little tip that uh, our special forces were out there operating on the front lines with Iraqi forces. So while we're doing things peacefully, and made and really urging people to keep calm but make sure you make a difference they are doing things in the same old way here's a clip from cbc and mr mansbridge exposing the truth peter the coalition fighting isis is made up of more than 60 countries but coalition officials say only one country canada has been involved in firefights Canadians are on the ground working with these guys, Iraqi forces. Canada's role, the government says, is to advise and assist. There will, however, be no ground combat mission, which is explicitly ruled out in the resolution. The question is whether what's happening now fits that definition. Three times in the last two weeks, Canadians were near the front lines when they were shot at. 
Officials say it's part of the job description in a mission that's evolving. It's not clear if Canadians should expect more firefights. I don't think I would quite characterize that as the new norm, but rather as more of a, a bit of a state of evolution of our role uh, uh, in the advise and assist capacity. Evolution, he says, means going from teaching Iraqi forces how to stand their ground to now helping them with battlefield tactics. Canadian fighter jets are also involved in air strikes, and it was revealed last week Canadians on the ground are helping identify targets. The opposition says the government hasn't been telling Canadians the truth about this mission. Is he finally willing to admit that this is indeed a combat mission? The defence minister wouldn't say whether it was combat or not, just that it was OK by him. Sir, the Prime Minister says that if you shoot against Canadian armed forces, they will shoot back, Mr. Speaker, and I'm very proud of the work that they're doing. The government said today that everything the Canadian forces are doing is consistent with the advise and assist role. We wanted to know why Canada was the only one involved in firefights. Is Canada doing something more dangerous than other countries? The Defence Minister's office said it was up to the coalition to talk about what other countries were doing, and the coalition said it didn't have an explanation. Okay, so Peter Mansbridge actually telling the story. After Stephen Harper stood up in the House of Commons and said, Canadian soldiers won't be on the front lines engaging forces directly. Yes, after he said that. And of course, he says a lot of things. Can I say accountability, transparency? How much is this costing? When are we getting out? Where are we going with all of this? Not one answer. Well, you know they're going to ask for an extension when the six-month mission is up. Yeah, and of course, we see not much from the opposition parties, okay? And that's where we got to light a fire. Get on top of your guys, man. Tell them to start making a difference. Can we say peace, diplomacy, intelligence, intellect? Of course, a revelation the special forces were engaged with uh, ISIS troops is uh, not really a big surprise, and other forces are involved in it. However, our Canadian government are the only ones divulging it to the public. Why are they divulging stuff to the public? Boy, I wish we had a clip on that. Gee, it might have to do with politics. Here's Tom Clark from the West Block asking that very question. Creating new laws to disrupt terrorists here at home is one aspect of dealing with ISIL. The other is taking the fight to them in Iraq and Syria. Canada is now into its fourth month of that fight. And despite taking no casualties and notching up some successes, the mission is nevertheless causing a lot of political friction. For the opposition, it's all about a lack of honesty. For the government, it's about who supports the troops more. So joining me is Scott Taylor, the editor and chief editor, rather, of Esprit de Corps magazine. From a military point of view, why on earth is the military revealing all this information, which has been one of the cl most closely held secrets of the military for decades? Um, the only thing I can think of is that people found out internally that this was happening, that there'd been a change in the mission from what they were specifically asked about, would they be engaging in this kind of activity? Would they be mentoring these Iraqi forces? And we were told no. They would be training, not mentoring. They wouldn't be on the front lines. Then it turns out they are. So now we've heard about it. They've tested the waters. The Canadians, for the most part, reacted positively. Yes, we're, we're engaging. We don't care. If they're killing ISIS beheaders, so be it. And yet we're the only country briefing on, on, on what we're doing, what our special operations forces are doing. Again, people jump to the conclusion that we're the only ones doing this because we're the only ones telling people we're doing it. We're not. Mm -hmm. But we're the only ones talking about it, and that comes back to the politics of all this, because it's, it's making the Conservative government look really good. And, and that is problematical from a military point of view, that if politics is driving something like revealing your special operations forces on the ground, I would imagine from a military point of view, uh, that's not a happy situation. I mean, soldiers are watching them squirm in front of these committee meetings, and they know the word accompany means accompany. It doesn't mean a musical accompaniment. <laughs> Simply going in and fighting evil in ISIS isn't enough. Canadians need to know who we're fighting for and what is victory going to look like. Scott Taylor, Esprit de Corps magazine. Awfully good to have you here. Thank you My very pleasure. much. Okay. We shouldn't be talking about this stuff, but we are, and you know, we are. Well, and it, it's really bugging the Tories that everybody's kind of choked about it. Well, you know, they hate us because we're Canadians. Yeah, I know! Can you believe he actually said that? They hit us for our freedoms. Really? I mean, I'm sorry, man. What are you, Bush? Did, I mean, he, like, did he get Bush a scriptwriter? Yeah, obviously he did. I am looking for that, that statement online where Bush says, oh, they hate us for our freedoms and our values. No, 
we started shipping arms to the bad guys. We started mouthing off and, you know, supporting an apartheid state in the middle of Middle East. It's nonsense. Yeah, maybe because we're bombing them and maybe our, you know, unrequited support are almost a love fest. Yeah. The Likud party in Israel might have something to do with some of the bad feelings we're getting from Islamic people. Oh, bad feelings and eggs. I mentioned it earlier, you know, that egg on the face thing. I, you know, and I'm really glad we happened to have a clip of the last outing for our dear John Baird. Yes, he was greeted warmly by the Palestinian people on his last visit to Jerusalem or Tel Aviv or wherever he was. I'm so glad that they could make English signs talking about it. Yeah, I know who John Baird is. Check it out. Dozens of protesters were waiting for John Baird following his meeting with the Palestinian foreign minister. They denounced Canada's presence in the West Bank, saying we are not neutral. 